Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's try something a little bit different. We still have a single conducting pad. It's still made of the two same materials, copper and aluminum. Same cross-sectional area, but now the lengths are different. The copper section is only 0.6 meters in length, and the aluminum section is 1.2 meters in length. The difference is the temperature between the heat reservoir and the heat sink is still 100 degrees centigrade. Now we use that very interesting technique when both of the lengths were the same, but now they're not the same. Could we still use the same technique? Well, if we realize that the heat transfer, if it was a copper section alone, length of 1.2 meters, and the same cross-sectional area, we had a heat transfer of 32 watts, and for aluminum, for the same conditions, geometric conditions, it was 17 watts. Yes, we can figure out very quickly what the heat conductivity would be in this situation as follows. The power transferred will be equal to two times the power transfer of the copper. Why twice? That's because the length is now half of what it was when I calculated the power transfer before. Half the length means twice the heat con conducted. And so we put two times the heat for the copper, uh, power transfer for the copper, and then we have one times for aluminum divided by the sum of the two, but we, again we have to multiply the heat transferred to the copper section by two, and we add to that the heat transferred to the aluminum section. So that's the adjustment then, half the length, twice the heat conductivity, and so therefore this is equal to twice 32 or 32.08, so that would be 64.16 watts, and so that nobody's confused, let me write down, we use 32.08 watts for the power transfer of copper, and we use 17.08 watts, that's the two decimal places for the aluminum section. So multiply this times, uh, we have 17.08 watts divided by twice that, that would be 64.16 watts plus and 17.08 watts. And that will give us the heat transferred through this combination. <clears throat> so 64.16 times 17.08 divided by the sum 64.16 plus 17.08 equals, and we get 13.49, 13.49 watts. That was easy. Now let's see if this is correct, see if it works. We're going to solve this in the same fashion as before, the more traditional fashion, by first finding the junction temperature between the two sections and then calculating the transfer of the heat to the, to the two uh, metals. All right, so we start with the same principle. Whatever heat transfers through the copper section must be the same as the heat transfer through the aluminum section. And so we have the dQ dt through the copper is the same as the dQ dt through the aluminum. And the equation is as follows. So we write K of the copper times the cross-section area of the copper times the difference in the temperature of the copper divided by the length of the copper equals, and so we have the heat conductivity of aluminum, cross-section area of aluminum, we have the delta T of the aluminum, and the length of the aluminum. All right, what's the same? Well, the cross-section area for both is still the same, so that cancels. And now notice that the length of the aluminum is twice the length of the copper. Hmm, so this can be replaced by two times the length of the copper. And if we do that, then the length of the copper cancels as well, and the two survives. Now we can take the two and bring it up here. So take the two and put it up here. And now we have something that was very similar to what we had before. So let's write out what we have. Twice the conductivity constant, so two times 385, times the difference in the temperature for the copper section is equal to 205, which is the heat conductivity constant for aluminum, times 100 minus the delta T for copper because Whatever this is, you subtract it from 100 and you get this. Now we only have the one unknown, the difference in the temperature on the copper section here. So how does that work? Well, we can write this as 770 times the delta T of the copper is equal to 20,500 minus 20, 
205 times the delta T of the copper. Now we move this to the other side, we add that, we get 975 times the delta T of the copper is equal to 20,500, which allows us to calculate the difference on the copper section in the temperature. And let's see what we get. 20,500 divided by 975, and we get 21.03 degrees. Which means that the junction temperature is 100 minus that, which means that it's equal to 78.97 degrees centigrade for the temperature at the junction. So now that we have the temperature at the junction, now we can calculate the heat flow to any of the two sections. So let's do the heat flow to the first section, which is the same as the heat flow through the second section. So the QDT, and of course, we expect that to be exactly the same as what we found over here. Let's find out. That's equal to Ka, whoop, Ka delta T divided by the length. So that's 385 times 0 0.001 times the difference, which is right here, 21.03, all divided by the length, which was 0 0.6. And let's see if we get the same result. Keep your fingers crossed and see what happens. Times 0 0.001 times 385 and divide by 0 0.6 equals, and we get 13 13.49 watts which is, of course, exactly the same as what we got before. So you see, it looks like it's correct. We can do it the traditional way, or if you already have the information about the heat transfer to each individual section, it is very easy to then find it for a combination, whether one after the other, and that's how it's done.